Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the Opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. Let's turn to the oral argument at the court then on Tuesday. This was a case called Starbucks versus McKinney. And I gather that this has to do with whether the National Labor Relations Board gets a shortcut in federal court when it wants an injunction after a union complaint. And let's listen to a piece of the oral argument. This is Justice Katanji Brown Jackson asking a question of Lisa Blatt, the lawyer arguing for Starbucks. They have only asked for this kind of injunction in a very, very small number of cases. 20,000 complaints are filed with the board. 700 result in board action. And of those 700 that the board is investigating and doing and determining, they've asked for this kind of injunction 14 times. So, I mean, I appreciate that maybe the standards we need to look at, and I understand four factors versus two factors, but this is not sounding like a huge problem. Well, restraint is not a basis for deference. And whether or not it's a huge problem, what petitioner wants is just a level playing field, the normal injunctive factors that agencies and private parties should get. So even if the board only sought one injunction, can can you please hold that the four factors apply? Alicia, what's your read of this case? And maybe the place to start is with what was the complaint that was lodged against Starbucks? So what happened here is this SEIU worker affiliate called Workers United has been seeking to unionize and organize a bunch of its stores across the country. And I would just point out this is a pretty radical progressive union, and they've been pretty out front uh, in terms of the anti-Israel protests. But that aside... What happened at the Starbucks in Memphis, Tennessee, is six Starbucks employees uh, announced their plans to unionize the store. And when the store was closed, these employees unlocked the door and let in a news crew, a local news crew, without the management's authorization to interview some workers to kind of draw attention to the union cause. Now, this uh, essential break-in violated the company policy. And Starbucks fired several workers who were responsible. So what did the union do? Well, they filed a complaint with their friends at the NLRB and claimed that firing the workers constituted an unfair labor practice because they were retaliating against their right to engage in concerted uh, activity. These NLRB regional directors are generally very sympathetic to the the unions, issued an administrative complaint, and then petitioned a federal judge for an injunction ordering Starbucks to reinstate the employees and expunge an unrelated discipline citation for one of them, and among other things required that essentially would have hemmed Starbucks in in various respects. And as it happens, the district court ruled in favor of the unions, actually, as typically happens, under a two-part test rather than the Supreme Court's traditional four-part test for seeking a preliminary injunction. And the standards that usually apply for almost every case, when a party seeks a preliminary injunction, you have to demonstrate that you're likely to succeed on the merits, that you will suffer irreparable harm in the absence of a preliminary relief. Uh, that the balance of equities tip in your favor, and then an injunction is in the public interest. Now, the Sixth Circuit, going back decades, set a more lenient standard for the NLRB and said that, well, the NLRB merely must show that there is reasonable cause to believe that unfair labor practices have occurred, and injunctive relief is just improper. Now, this, again, is is far easier to meet for the NLRB than the four-part test. Uh, and really skews the the equities or tips the scales in favor of the NLRB. So the district court judge deferred to the NLRB, and Starbucks ended up contesting this in an administrative proceeding that continues actually to this day, and actually also sought legal discovery to show that the NLRB was kind of acting in concert with the union. And what did the NLRB or general uh, counsel do? Well, then she actually accused Starbucks of committing an unfair labor practice act by subpoenaing some records. And all this just goes to show how the, the due process rights of employers are really violated by this anomalous two-part standard that the Sixth Circuit has created. 
And the importance of this is that if a lower standard allows union complaints to get easier junctions within the jurisdiction of the Sixth Circuit, that makes settlements and so forth much more likely because it gives these labor unions more leverage against the employers that they're complaining about. And Kim, by the way, if this is a Sixth Circuit rule only, it seems like the Supreme Court is maybe overdue in stepping in and cleaning up what they call a circuit split, which is a different interpretation of the law that is reigning in one area of the country versus the rest of the country. Yeah, absolutely. And one that has given the NLRB just way too much power, because what happens is essentially under this standard, the lower courts, when you have these, end up having to defer to the board allegations, even if those allegations are later contradicted. And injunctions also interfere with the kind of day-to-day operations of an employer's ability to to do their the work. That you know, often they again they have to rehire back employees at expensive levels, and and these things can stay in effect as well until the NLRB has time to fully adjudicate the case, and that can take absolutely years. And so, what the NLRB does is uses these injunctions as a bludgeon against companies to get them to simply settle and not see the cases all the way through. And they actually brag about this. The agency does them. I think half of all cases with injunctions since 2010 have resulted in settlements. And they're proud of that fact. They say, you know, injunctions are a strong catalyst for settlement. So it's clear that they're using them and abusing them. And this situation is giving them the power in, in certain situations to really beat on corporations in a way that just isn't allowed in some other places. So it would be great to put them in place, especially because there are dozens of other federal agencies that are required to follow the traditional injunctive relief standard. And there seems to be no reason whatsoever why the NLRB has this carve out in this one district. Thank you, Kim and Alicia. Thank you all for listening. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. If you like the show, please hit that subscribe button, and we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Potomac Watch.